<laughs> All right, so uh, in the NFL, there are 32 teams. And, you know, each season, you know, when it gets started, you know, preseason starts in August, you know, they all have one goal, right? That is to get to the Super Bowl. And each team has 53 players on their active roster, by the way. And only 48 are allowed to suit up for a game. And they also have 16 other players on their practice squad. And so that makes up for 2,028 men for in the NFL players. And they train and they practice, and not just during the season, but throughout the whole year. And they do that to keep their bodies in shape so that they can play in the highest level. Well, don't they? And if you go online and you look at some of these guys' regiments that they do, it's, it's insane. Uh, Jerry Rice, the top receiver in the NFL uh, back in the day, he had some sort of crazy thing that he would do every day, even in the off season. And other players would come and join him sometimes to see what he did. And they're, they're, a lot of them were throwing up and sick to their stomach before he even got through it. And one player stayed with them for a day, and they went and they did all this stuff, and then it was breakfast. So they went breakfast, and he said, Jerry goes, wow, that is really hard. And how do you do that every day? And he laughed at him. He goes, that was just the warm-up. <laughs> <laughs> then he, he took him out after breakfast. That guy never came back, I guess. So these guys, but why do they do it? Why do they train so hard and discipline their bodies to stay fit? To get to the Super Bowl. Exactly. They want to go to the Super Bowl. They want to be on that team that goes to the Super Bowl. And those who don't keep up with it, what happens to them? Those that don't train hard, well, they get cut, don't they? And then they become like us, and they end up watching the Super Bowl on TV from their couches. Right? <laughs> so today, with that, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. <clears throat> First Corinthians 9, 24 through 27, a very familiar uh, passage that Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, Church of Corinth. Nine twenty-four of First Corinthians. Are we all there? Okay. And it says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? But one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Paul is using an analogy here comparing our Christian lifestyle with those who compete in athletic games. And Alexander McLaren, a Scottish Baptist minister from the 1800s, uh, tells us what Paul was referring to here in verse 25. He said, one of the most famous of the Greek athletic festivals was held close by Corinth. Its prize was a pine wreath from the neighboring sacred grove. The painful abstinence and training of 10 months and the fierce struggle of 10 minutes had for the result a twist of green leaves that withered in a week and a little fading fame, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> A little fading fame that was worth scarcely more and lasted scarcely longer. The struggle and the discipline were noble. The end was contemptible. Those Greek athletes competed for a worthless prize. The prize they worked so hard to obtain died and withered away within a week. And the fame of winning quickly vanished. I mean, florists make a fortune off of this whole idea, don't they? 
especially this time of year. And, and just as McLaren wrote, the end was contemptible. So if those in the world compete for a worthless crown, little wreath they put on their head, we as Christians should be striving all the more in our race. For we get an imperishable crown, it says here, one that does not fade away. And God has called us to play in his Super Bowl of life. To be in the game. We are to be in the game. Not a bench warmer, or we might say a pew sitter. Not a practice player. Many people are practice players, aren't they? They say they're Christians, they're really not. But we are to be a starter. We are to be on the first team. And look at verses 26 and 27 again. That's what Paul says. Therefore I run thus, not with uncertainty, thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. <laughs> Paul is telling us that he is disciplined in what he does. He disciplines himself. And he brings those things in his life which are sinful practices into subjection. He does not want sin to master him. He does not want sin in his life to be his master, but he draws himself closer to Christ so that by and through him, he will master that sin. He will have victory over it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse uh, 3 through 6, Paul writes this, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. In verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought <laughs> into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Bringing, that takes discipline. That takes discipline to take every thought into captivity into the obedience of Christ. You know, somebody wrongs us, where do our thoughts go? Revenge. Yeah, we want revenge right away, right now, don't we? And, you know, I could make out a long laundry list of things, but uh, we need to bring our thoughts into, into obedience to Christ. That's how we have victory, no matter what, you know, we covet. Doreen saw this really nice truck yesterday going down the road. She goes, oh, look at that truck. Blah, blah, blah. Said, yeah, it was a nice truck. I wasn't accompanying it, was I? I said, no, you're just admiring. It was. It was a nice truck. You know, it was one thing about, she didn't say, I wish I had it. I got to have it. Follow him. Let's buy it. <laughs> See if he'll trade our truck for his truck. No, she didn't say that. This is, you know, we could admire, you know, something. You know, women, you know, always admire each other. Women, you know, outfits. I'm not coveting it. At least I hope not. Anyway, on, on with our lesson. So, but the battles we have against the flesh are real then. And we need to surrender our battles to who? To Christ. And it is by and through him is where we will find our victory. But just as Paul writes back in our text in verse 27 that we have to be disciplined, Paul ends the verse with, uh, he does not want to be disqualified. It's kind of a, one of those weird things you read like, well, what? I don't want to be disqualified. Well, he's talking about, you know, he doesn't want to be one of these guys who's, you know, preaching to everybody or writing these letters to these churches. This is how you have to be, everybody. You need to walk the line. And Paul's living a completely different lifestyle. He doesn't want to be the hypocrite. You know, because that would disqualify him, wouldn't it? Uh, you know, you can't, you know, you guys come here, you listen to me, and then um, you found out that I was doing 
ungodly things all throughout the week, what respect would you have the next week when you came here? You wouldn't even want to come into our pinnacle group. You'd be like, no, no, David's out coveting trucks with his wife. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you know, we don't want to play the hypocrite. And it's important that we live a disciplined life, making ourselves ready and practicing and living what we preach so that we too won't be disqualified. We want to be in the game. So I have some questions for us all. So how do we train so we can run well and not be hindered? By reading our Bible. Reading our Bibles, yes. Staying in God's Word. Staying in God's Word. Praying. Pray. Mm -hmm. But those are all good things, but there has to be, what, a consistency to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, do we just pray when we're in trouble? No. Do we just read God's word when we're just like, well, I guess I should open up my Bible today. You know? If we're not grateful, we're not going to have anything. Yeah. Then be grateful first. Be grateful. That's Everything. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. That seems to be the word God keeps. I feel like I'm on Sesame Street this, word, this week. <laughs> That's the word God keeps giving to me is to be grateful. <laughs> so thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> that reminder. That's the way to start the day. You just kind of thank you before you get up so you can get up. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have things that hinder us. And the Bible tells us what? The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. few. And how true is that? So we are so are we ready to be called into the game if asked? Are you ready? You get the call. God calls you. I need you. You ready? You're all ready to go. You're all prepared. You're all disciplined. Every one of you. Okay, good. I'm on the winning team. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're ready to stand up for your faith no matter what. Okay, good. Are you ready to share with others when God brings somebody into your life? You're all ready. Okay, good. I'm in the right class. Are you ready to be giving of your gifts? Your time and your resources. You all ready? You all ready? Yeah. Okay, then I'm in the right class. Mm -hmm. I read to you from Galatians uh, 5, uh, verse 7. <clears throat> he says, Paul writes to them, he says, um, You ran well, who hindered you from obeying the truth? <laughs> That's what there's going to be things, obstacles that are going to come our way. Not just once, not twice, but throughout our life that are going to try to stumble us from doing what we should be doing. And so what things do hinder us to, or to make us stagnant in our Christian growth? What are those things? We don't take the time. We don't take the time, right? Yes. Um, getting depressed. Getting depressed. Like, you know, not taking your thoughts captive. Okay, And good. then, little by little, those thoughts building up into a state of mind where you are down all That's the time. That's good. I like that. You might get a kiss today for that. <laughs> That's my wife, everybody. <laughs> Just in case somebody new happens to watch our channel. <laughs> yeah. But what are things? What are things hinder us? How about television? How about Facebook? Oh no, stepping on toes now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Quit meddling, that's right. Here's a big one. Politics. You know, I was thinking about that. I wrote that down. I'm thinking. How many Christians can name who the senators, 12 senators, but they can't name all 12 apostles? Think about that one. Ask who can name those senators. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we probably named the apostles. Yeah, yeah, that's that's fine. Fine. <laughs> How about spending less time with Christians and more time with non-believers? Where we're hanging out, what are we doing? Or just not being in fellowship. Well, the things, those are all things that you know take us down. But you know, and like my wife said, 
know, the thoughts that we have that we entertain sometimes, they will bring us down. They will cause us to start questioning, you know, God on things, his faithfulness, and uh, that makes us stagnant. That, uh, that hinders our walk. That, uh, that's basically like an Achilles heel in the game, right? And then bringing out the medics to us and pulling us off the field on a stretcher. Uh, so what important, what is important? Is, is it the things of the world or the things of God? What's important to us? Which race are we running to win in? I mean, some people, you know, they, they just want that brass ring of life. And I uh, know many Christians that that's kind of seem to have it upside down a little bit. All they want to do is, you know, is get that next, you know, next big high paying job, that next, you know, 100000 that next $1 million. And that's what they strive for. Yeah, so that's the race they're running in. And then Philippians chapter 3. Uh, verse 12 through 14, Philippians 3, verse 12. Not that I have already attained or am ready perfected, already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Jesus, Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. But one thing um, I just, just realized there. Let's not look back. That will hinder us. Paul's saying don't look back. Amen. We turn to look forward, to press on. And I think that's really important. Uh, it's real easy to look back on things and have regrets, and that will pull us down. So we, we press on to the goal. We press on for that prize that God has for us. In closing, I want to read this to you. And it says, run whatever race or call that God has set out for you. Run that race with certainty, purpose, and intensity. Run that race to win. Run that race to be the best you can be for God at the position that he has called you to be on his team. Be willing to make whatever sacrifices it may take to successfully complete the mission and call God has set out for you. Very good. Let's pray and let's have the birthday. Father God, thank you for this time together. And Lord, uh, we all are on your team. And Lord, may we discipline our bodies. May we be disciplined in our walk with you. And may we not be hypocritical. And Lord, may we be ready to uh, answer the call when you want us to do a special task. May we be ready for it. May we be expecting it. And so Lord, I thank you for this group here at Pentacle, Lord. And uh, what a dear sweet brothers and sisters they are. And Lord, I'm glad to be on their team. And so, Lord, thank you for that. So, Lord, just bless this week, and may we be ready to play. In Jesus' name, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen.